So what is uh, prompt engineering? So our definition is that it's the art of being specific with what you want. So if you hear of this term called a prompt, it's just another term for question that you ask the model. So on the right hand side here, you see this image and the, the prompt here is, what is prompt engineering? Describe in one sentence and a few bullet points. That's a prompt. And that's using prompt engineering to specify that you want it in a specific style. And the key to getting the best results is to provide clear context, explicit instructions, and success criteria to the models. At a high level, that's how we at OpenAI think about prompt engineering. And broadly, if you use other tools, all of this is also going to be applicable to those tools as well. One thing that you might not know is that we all prompt engineer every single day and very frequently we do and we just don't call it prompt engineering so i'm going to walk through a couple of examples where you actually prompt engineer in day-to-day -day conversation uh, without realizing it for example maybe some of you as instructors have asked does everyone understand the assignment and you've gotten some head nods gotten quiet murmurs this and that you can ask the same question, but in a different way of, can someone explain this concept in their own words or give an example of how it might be used in real life? In this case, you can see the overall goal is to elicit some sort of participation and make sure you can validate that people understand the assignment. The first way, you're kind of keeping it open-ended. In the second one, we're a little bit more specific and, and the goal there is that it elicits a different response, even though the goal is the same. Let's do another example. Can you stop interrupting? Very direct, might not get the best response, but you might prompt engineer it to say, you can tell you're excited, what's one thing you wanna add that helps us stay on track? I think teachers, parents, I think you all are the most at this, uh, just cause you're dealing with uh, some of the most difficult people on the planet. I really like this example. What did you learn at school today versus what's one thing you learned today that you think I wouldn't know? I actually thought that was a fantastic example. Of, of prompt engineering. And just one more, did you finish your work versus which part was the most fun or, or most challenging? So as you think about you know, what is prompt engineering, you can see here that the idea here is the goal of these questions left and right are the same, but framing it in a different way is going to get you a, a better and more precise response. And that's exactly how we think philosophically about prompt engineering LLMs for your specific task. So as we think about applying this and drawing the lesson from the exercise, how do I apply this to things like we talked about grading assignments and things like that? How do we apply it? So there's really three key, at a, at a 101 level, right? There's three key things that you need to provide it. First of all, it's a task. So this one's easy, right? Explain this topic, analyze the attached data. That's what the, the focus of the, the task is or what you want the model to do at its core. Uh, earlier in the assignment, right? It was, uh, earlier in the game that we did, it was talk about a topic for, for 30 seconds, right? And you can see we're able to do that. The second sort of layer to that is a persona. And we saw how differently that topic was explained based on the persona we provided it. So one other example is gravity, right? We could talk about gravity or something like a scientific topic like photosynthesis at the third grade level, at that middle school level, high school level, PhD level. So if you just say explain gravity, it's going to actually generalize to a, a common understanding, but you can prompt it to provide with using these personas to provide more specific requirements like explain gravity as a third grader. And that's going to give you a much different response than explain gravity as, as you know, a PhD expert in which it's going to be highly technical and so on and so forth. And the last part is, is these, uh, what I'll call output, but other modifiers, right? Where we be more specific about how we want that response. So in some cases, when we have lesson plans, you might have a step-by-step -step of how you want it to produce a response or you wanna learn about a topic, but maybe you just want it in, in three key bullet points and not a multi-paragraph response. That's the other idea behind uh, prompting is, is clarifying what success looks like for you. Uh, this is not meant to be prescriptive, but to just give you an example of to, how to think about framing these prompts in a way that gets very specific outputs. Uh, since a lot of the, the feedback we get is that we asked it a question and it didn't give me exactly what I wanted and so I, I stopped using the tool. This is sort of that 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 gap that, that can help fill that performance gap with the models in terms of prompting it and being more specific. Let's go through a specific example and then I'm going to switch to uh, and walk through some live demos. So let's say as an elementary school teacher, Natalie wants to build a lesson plan aligned with an ELL standard. 
So we might say, please generate a lesson plan for me abiding by ELL standards. I'm attaching two documents, one of which is the, the lesson plan you may have pulled from Share My Lesson, and the other one is a desired ELL strategy. This one's, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with this prompt, but I think it can be improved. So one uh, modifier that we can apply to this is assuming a role, right? Assume the role of an educator. I'm going to provide you an ELL strategy and a lesson plan. So with the persona, you're giving it very clear context about what the task is going to be and the sort of mindset that it needs to assume. Uh, and that's going to help guide the model response into producing a more precise response. One other modifier we can say is we can add a little bit more meat to that uh, persona. So expert educator with a lot of experience in the field. I'm going to provide you this uh, Loring, Colorado classroom strategy, a lesson plan, target this particular level three standard, flag any specific changes. So in this example, you can be, you have that persona at the top, you have that task in the middle, and then you have these modifiers. Those are really sort of like the basics or what are the three key things to think about uh, as you think about prompt engineering the model to get specific responses. So this one, for example, I would say is, is a great job. And there's all sorts of prompt engineering we can do. You can, you can add more uh, examples to the prompt and so on and so forth. The key thing here is that experimenting with the model is, is much more valuable than, than learning from slides. So I would encourage everyone to take this with a, uh, not necessarily a grain of salt, but just use this as a, as a high level framework with a much more valuable exercise being actually getting on console, trying different prompts out, seeing what works, and being very as specific as possible about what you'd like to see. So things to take away before we jump into the demo, it's again, all about context. Context is king. These models have been trained on, on a large amount of publicly available data. If you don't specify a persona, it's just going to assume that you want the most generic or most general version of that answer possible. So providing as much context as possible is really going to be one of the most powerful tools you have to, to getting it more aligned with, with your specific desirement. The second one is that examples are incredibly valuable. So if you have examples of here is what good looks like, if you provide that as part of your prompt, that is incredibly valuable because one of these things these models are very good at is, is pattern matching. So uh, taking one example or two or three examples and then applying that pattern to a new set of data, that's something that these models are very good at. So if you're able to provide those examples as part of your prompt, that's very valuable as well. Uh, you can make these prompts as simple or as complex as you want. Just know that it's gonna tend toward general answers. So for example, if you're looking for restaurant recommendations for a birthday, right? It's my birthday tomorrow. So I wanna find a birthday re restaurant in, in Alexandria, Virginia. I don't have to type out this 10 paragraph prompt of assume the role of an expert restaurant recommendator. You don't have to do all that. You can just say, give me some restaurants around Alexandria, Virginia. And for me, that's good enough. I don't need much more information besides a couple of recommendations. But if you're trying to do something much more specific and repeatable where there is clear success criterion, you know, those are the moments where you actually want to be much more precise. And then the last thing is that it's, it's a chat app, right? So you don't have to think about, oh, I have to create, create this massive mountain of text that I'm then going to submit. Uh, you can think about these as I will give it a prompt, it'll give me a response, and I'll iterate through the two to three. I'll ask it to clarify or, or follow up on some points or improve these certain things, and it can do that. So uh, those are just some high, high level takeaways. Uh, we do have a best practices. I'm not gonna go through this slide. I think it'll be distributed after the, the lesson, but just other things to think about in terms of prompting best practice. But the number one thing you can do is just try it out for yourself, try out different prompts, try modifying them and, and seeing what works best for you.